What are the situations in which you've met with Putin, and what did the two of you talk about? Uh, well, there were uh, uh, two conversations. Walter Isaacson, the you know famed uh, author among uh, other titles, talk about the conversations you've had with him about shapers. Um, well, so what do I mean by a shaper? Um, when I decided that I'm, uh, you know, wanting to pass along Bridgewater to others and I want to get the right CEO, I wanted to get um, a person, a shaper, uh, who could go from visualization to actualization. So Steve Jobs would be a great example of a shaper, or Elon Musk is a great example of a shaper. Somebody who can visualize great and then make that reality happen, which is stuff that I like to do. Um, and so what I did is I went around um, and gave personality tests. Big time people, your, your peers who are shapers. Uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, uh, Reed Hastings, uh, for the uh, founder of Netflix, Mohammed Yunus, who uh, came up with microfinance and won, uh, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, Jeff Canada. You know, yeah. I, I could just run the list. Um, first, I wanted to see what was their type? How did, what, what was their configuration of preferences that made them what they are? So that was good. And then also they were curious about um, not only themselves, but how they could learn and use the test for other people. And it's a big thing for me. This has been like a 25 year thing. I'm going to, we, I just created um, a personality profile test. We call it Principles U. Um, that I'm going to make available for everybody for free because um, I believe they're so valuable for an understanding oneself and then also for understanding what to expect of others and what others are like. Um, so uh, Walter um, did uh, biographies not only of Jobs, but of um, Einstein, um, uh, Ben Franklin, um, and recently Leonardo da Vinci. So he's fascinated as well with how people think. Um, and so we had a good conversation about that. What did you find out when doing the personality assessments with the shapers? Well, uh, deep, deep, deep compelling need to understand things in a common sense mechanical way so that they could then take that and visualize. So there were deep independent thinkers and practical at the same time. Quite often you have people with imagination who are not practical and people who are practical with not a much imagination. Uh, they, had, they had both of those things. Um, they were passionately, unwaveringly um, committed so that it's a high to make discoveries. How about the most interesting experience you've ever had personally with Bill Gates and Elon Musk? Well, um, Elon describing to me, um, you know, how he, why Mars and how, how going to Mars is important to him, um, you know, and, and his curiosity and his ability to learn. Um, and then we talk about, um, you know, life on other planets or, like he, he was saying, you know, um, the planet may not end up being hospitable. Uh, so we need to think about going to Mars and nobody's talking about going to Mars. And I sold um, my company. I, I, I think he said it was, I, I got $180 million. I decided I'd take $90 million, try to get uh, inspired to go to Mars. So I said, did you know anything about all that stuff? And he, he said, no. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just curious and um, and his curiosity and his learning from others and his imagination uh, let him do what SpaceX has become. Bill, um, obviously, there are things that he understands, vaccines and, um, and you know, infectious diseases and so on. But uh, philanthropy or helping people or... Um, uh, technology, uh, including artificial intelligence and, and so on, then I think they would agree with me 
um, that um, their real advantages come from knowing how to deal with what they don't know more than anything they know. So they have voracious appetites. Um, it, it's very different than most people perceive very successful uh, people like that. Uh, they think, wow, they know a lot. Um, and they uh, think, wow, they've accomplished a lot, or even wow, they're rich, uh, and wow, they're powerful. And it's not like that at all. It's more uh, like um, they're, they're, they're curious. Leaders, uh, there was no leader you admired more than the late Singapore leader, uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Uh, tell about the dinner that you had at your house. Um, well, it was... Um, with him and um, I had um, Paul Volcker, who I, uh, Federal Reserve Chairman, and um, and then I had Bob Rubin, who was the Treasury Secretary. And so we were uh, around the table and um, we went around and, and um, asked him uh, what, you know, who were the best leaders, what were the, who were the worst leaders, what was the complexion of the existing leaders, um, you know, and so we got uh, all of his all of his thoughts. And very interesting man because Singapore is you know this little city that um, is kind of a mosquito infested swamp that had nothing particularly special other than um, he created a culture and a way of operating there um, that made uh, Singapore what it is today. So uh, that was what the, the dinner explored. What was his reasoning for saying uh, Vladimir Putin was uh, one of the best leaders worldwide? He said that you you have to um, evaluate a leader within the context of his circumstances. Um, and so if you go into Putin and you know the situation when he took over the Soviet Union, which was Russia at the time because the Soviet Union had fallen apart and there is corruption and there's um, anarchy, literal anarchy, um, and, uh, and they're broke. And uh, Boris Yeltsin, who preceded him, was an alcoholic, and there was no government, and there was no bureaucracy. And he described how uh, he came in, and he had to deal with all of that to create <clears throat> order. And he spoke about the accomplishments uh, to stabilize it. Uh, to raise the incomes, to establish the institutions that they didn't have before, those kinds of things. What are the situations in which you've met with Putin, and what did the two of you talk about? Uh, well, there were uh, two conversations um, about economics, about how Russia, um, timeless and universal um, rules of how economies work, and in particular, um, the uh, potential of Russia um, to develop capital markets and, uh, and be more efficient in developing the economy. Some economics and markets. When you actually are engaging with the people who are making the decisions, you're getting much closer, you're getting a much better understanding of how the world actually works. Mostly, I think, is part of his curiosity and discovery process. And the second thing is he has a very, a very strong urge to, uh, to share, to, share uh, to, to contribute in some way to the world. And I think that's part of why he engages with policymakers is to like, hey, I've done this work. Uh, here, you, what do you think? you know, like, can this help you? How does whatever preconceived notion you might have of whoever the world leader is compare to the reality of when you're actually in the room with one of them? The, um, I've learned that uh, preconceived uh, notions of what they're like um, really aren't worth very much. Um, I'm sure you've experienced that. You speak to a lot of people in the, doing your interviewing, and uh, I'm sure you make that same sort of discovery that um, preconceived notions are not worth very much.